Another Sunday School Short. Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians 1 through 4 today. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. While Paul was in Ephesus, there on the map in the, in the middle, on the western edge of Turkey there, he got several reports from the Church of Corinth, which is there on the map uh, in Greece. Uh, as you can see, southern part of Greece there, that concerned him. Paul confronted them with their sin. He begins to, he begins with a warm spiritual greeting filled with reminders of their life in Christ. Now you have every spiritual gift. This is verse 7. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly await for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul appeals to them in verse 10 to live in harmony with each other, telling them to be of one mind, united in thought and in purpose he goes on to talk about hey our denominations already starting here he's he's essentially saying here some say hey i follow paul hey i follow apollos and others i'm only following christ verse 13 says has christ been divided into fractions and it talks about he being paul didn't even baptize anyone and he names off well i did baptize a couple people but i intentionally didn't baptize a bunch of people because of this uh so people couldn't say well they they follow me um He's just like me, myself, just pointing people to Jesus, just pointing people to God's Word. Verses 18 through 31, uh, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction, but we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. Paul says, so what about the world's philosophers, etc.? You ask about them. Paul has made the wisdom of this world like foolishness, the last part of 20 says. Since the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. Verse 21. And in 25, this foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And it goes on to talk about that few of us, meaning Paul and his group, Apollos, the, the believers and teachers, and, and just everybody in general. Few, few, few of us are the wisest and most powerful and the most wealthy, yet that's what God uses to show off is what he's saying. That's what God uses to show off. He just uses normal people. He didn't use the Albert Einsteins of the world to reveal himself to the world. He, re, he uses you and me to do that. His power, his strength, his wisdom, his wealth, that's what he uses to reveal those things to the world. Uh, verse 31, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. And in uh, chapter 2, Paul, I don't use lofty, wor lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. My message was very plain. I relied on the Holy Spirit so that you wouldn't trust in human wisdom, but in the power of God. Uh, when I'm among you, when I'm among mature believers, I speak of the mysteries of God. The rulers of this world don't understand it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glorious Lord. Verse 8. And in 10, But it is to us that God revealed these things by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deepest, deepest secrets. Verse 12. We have received God's Spirit so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. And it says something like this. People that have received this Holy Spirit think all things are that have received think all things are foolish and can't understand it. That haven't received his Holy Spirit. Think that all these things are foolish and they can't understand it. We understand these things for we have the mind of Christ. Verse 16. In chapter 3, uh, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as spiritual people. As I had to talk to you as you were infants in your Christian walk. I had to feed you in milk, not with spiritual food, or not with solid food, excuse me. And the last part of three, you are still controlled by your sinful natures. Aren't you living like people of the world, he says? And he, Paul, he speaks of Paul versus Apollos, and here you're taking sides again. He goes into that again, and then Paul says... Um, we just did the work God gave us. We work together for his purpose. And that's what the church is all about. We work together. You're gifted in some areas. I'm gifted in some areas. We work together and come together for God's purpose. And it goes on to say a little something like this. I have given you an excellent foundation. And whoever's building on it must be very careful. Okay, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, which is Jesus Christ. 
Um, so if you're hearing anything other than Jesus Christ saves you, then that is a false gospel. That's a false um, thought. Paul said it then. I'm saying it now. He goes on to say, if you use a variety, you can use a variety of materials, gold, silver, wood, uh, hay, straw to build type a uh, type of foundation. But in verse 13, but on judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. If the work survives, the builder will receive an award. If not, he will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through the walls of flame. I don't want to be that. I want to be on the solid foundation building with good material. Okay, join me in that. Chapter 4. So look at Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. He goes on to say, uh, it matters very little how you evaluate me, and I feel the same way. You know, you think what you want to about me. Um, I don't even trust in myself. I don't even trust in my own judgment, he says, I say. But in verse 4, it is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. Verse 5, so don't make judgments of anyone ahead of ahead of time before the Lord returns, for he will bring the darkest secrets and reveal our private motives. He goes on to talk about how they, the, being the Corinthians, think they have it all together, while we, Paul and Apollos, work wearily with our own hands, earning a living. We are treated like trash, he says. I'm not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. Just as the Old Testament prophets were warned against complacency here and false teachings, Paul is warning these people. And we too must fight this complacency today. I urge you to imitate me, he says in verse 16. He's not saying this in a boastful way, but the scriptures weren't widely circulated outside of the synagogues, possibly, in the little cell house churches. So not everybody had a Bible like we do today. So he was saying, imitate me. Do what I do. If you're just hearing my word and you don't have any words to go on it, do what I do. And I say that as well. Um, get into God's word. Imitate me there. Be a daily Bible reader. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.